live here on AMP, rocking and rolling with my man, Jason Sobel. We got a week to go till Augusta. We just had, I don't know, the coolest match play since like Tiger Woods won the USAM back in the mid 90s. And uh, we got a lot on the line this week for uh, a young man named Ricky Fowler, who's tr been trending, but he still needs a win to get in to the Masters. You can hear Sobel every single week. Uh, Sirius XM Channel 92 with, with the caddy. Find him on the internet, the Action Network, writing about gambling. You know, he had an interesting pick this week. Sobel, what's going on, bro? What's up, John? Thanks for having me, as always. Uh, yeah, this is sort of the golden ticket to the proverbial chocolate factory next week. We've got one left, and everyone's trying to open up as many chocolate bars and find that golden ticket. And so Ricky Fowler's the biggest name on that list. He's pretty short odds, second or third on the board, depending on which book you look at. But only eight players in the Valero Texas Open field are qualified for next week's Masters. So there's a really good chance that somebody does indeed get that final invitation and get uh, uh, get a trip to Augusta on Sunday night. Yeah, before we dive into Valero, obviously you and I discussed it last week. It really made the rounds once the tournament started being really sweet. Like, this is sad. Uh, now, I think a huge part of the excitement is clearly the course, right? The course is just perfectly made. You can make a bunch of birdies. It's quirky. It's got the lake. It's just sweet. That was a huge reason, right? The course, the members, the breakup was inevitable there. Uh, but come the weekend, I mean, we had star power everywhere. You had Sam Burns on the comeback trail. Cam Young looks like if Cam Young with the MLB on his uh, collar was a baseball player, he'd be a 60 home run guy every single yeah. year. You talk about yeah. power, Scotty, Rory, kind of sad because that, that was really fun. Cam Young might be Mike Trout, you know, a guy that yeah, that's is a good the best one. player out there that doesn't ever win. How's that for an analogy what, there? What, but. what was your, what was your tweet in, in, in however many starts he has te eight top tens or something? So he joined the PGA Tour a year and a half ago, exactly 18 months ago. He has 10 top three finishes around the world. Not all of them on the PGA Tour, a couple gotcha. of them on the DP World Tour or other circuits around the world, but 10 top threes without a victory so far. As for the weekend, I, you know, I'm struggling to, to still figure out, was this the best possible outcome for the PGA Tour, having four great players in the final match play on the weekend and finishing things up on Sunday, or did they almost want to go out with a whimper instead of a bang? Did they almost want four guys who everyone looks at and says, ah, you know what? I'm kind of over this match play thing. Let's move on from this and let's get going. Because what happened this weekend, I think has fueled everybody's love for watching match play golf. And look, I, I, I've used the analogy over the past week or so that it's very much like the WM Phoenix open in that once a year, one week out of the year, it's really cool. Hey, in Phoenix, let them party. Let them have fun. Do you want to see it every week? Absolutely not. But for one week, we understand it, and it's fun. Do we want to see 10 different match play events every year? No. Come on. That would be ridiculous. But I think having more than zero would be a really good idea moving forward. I do think in some shape or form, we'll see it back on the schedule. Maybe not next season. Maybe the season afterwards. We're talking 2025. But that's a long way away. And, and it's a shame that we're not going to have match play. You have the world's best players playing match play against each other uh, moving forward in the short term. I, I think what speaks to just the depth of right now uh, of the tour and the talent is, you know, with DJ gone and Bryson gone, I, I guess at the top tier of just firepower, you you would think Rom and Rory. And I think Scotty is kind of coming right behind him, right? Just when you just think like this guy's got it all. You watch Sam Burns and Cam Young deck and neck with those two guys. You can't really notice a difference in, in terms of ball striking, the power those guys possess, the ability to just make shit happen around the greens. I mean, for guys that aren't really considered top 10 guys, especially when it comes to gambling on, you know, major fields, maybe when, when they're a little deeper, those guys, clearly their high end talent is pretty freaking high. For those people like myself who are putting together lists and rankings of their favorite Masters contenders for next week, I think you probably before this past weekend had a list that, okay, you've got, like you said, Scotty, Rom, Rory, a lot of people like Jordan Spieth. I'm certainly on, on that train as well. 
Patrick Cantley, Xander Shoffley, Colin Morikawa, Justin Thomas. I mean, there's a lot of really good players. You want to throw in Cam Smith and Dustin Johnson who are going to move over from live and play in the Masters. They're qualified. I certainly think that's uh, within the realm of possibility. But then all of a sudden, you're like, well, that's more than 10 players already. I've got my top 10. I've got 12 players in my top 10. And maybe you didn't have Sam Burns and maybe you didn't have Cameron Young. And all of a sudden you're going, what am I going to do? I got it. I gotta cross a few names off that list to fit them in there somewhere. And I'm telling you, I mean, I, I feel like I say this every year, but very honestly, this year, I'm gonna have 27 guys in my top 10. I don't know how you create a top 10 list going into this one because there are so many guys who are playing really good golf going into the year's first major. And I I just don't know. I mean, it's a process of elimination. I don't know how you start eliminating players. I don't know how you look at any of these guys and say, he just doesn't have it right now. I mean, maybe a couple of them. You and I talked about Will Zalatoris a little bit before we started the pod. I mean, okay, maybe, you know, there's injury concerns, there's putter concerns, but there's not a whole lot of players in that top 20 of the world ranking where you go, yeah, I'm crossing him off my list right away. I don't think he can do it. Even Xander, right? I mean, he kind of had, had a weird season. Then all of a sudden, you watch him this week, you're like, God, he looks pretty dialed in. You know, yeah. I mean, he went, you know, he went, I think it was toe to toe with Rory. Uh, you know, b- before we dive into this week, it- it's obviously we got a kind of a big three and, and the, the odds reflect it. It does feel like Scotty, you know, I mean, his three so far, the tournaments that he won last year, he he won the Phoenix Open. He has finished, you know, he finished fourth last week, but really it's, it feels like what the hell's the difference like fourth and second. I mean, he, he feels like how are you going to not have some exposure on that guy going into Augusta? The way you don't have exposure is you look at him and say, he's really short right now. He's seven, seven and a half to one, depending on the book. And you just don't want to go chase a short number. But uh, look, if you still weren't sold for some reason on Scotty Scheffler, I'm going to sell you even more on him. He has now defended three titles. His first three titles on the PGA tour from last year at Phoenix, He won yet again, successfully defended his title. And Bay Hill finished in a share of fourth place. And then, as you mentioned, the match play, he finished in fourth again. And so you look at the guy and say, I I don't know if he's specifically a horse-horse type of player where he's going to play the same, play really well at the same golf courses year after year after year. But he's certainly showing that so far. And the next one he's getting to where he's going to defend the title is next week at Augusta National. And he's playing really good golf. You take course history and you take recent form and you put them together. I mean, that's, you know, there's a very inexact science when it comes to prognosticating golf tournaments, but there are two big things we look at and that's form and history. He's got both of them right at the top level and and probably better than anybody else. I I don't see how you overlook him either. I I don't know that you necessarily want to go all in on Scotty and say, that's my guy. And I'm betting on him this week because quite frankly, you can't fill up the card. I, I don't see how you can. If you're going to bet Scotty and you say, well, I'm almost going to bet Rom and, you know, I kind of of like Rory as well. Uh, That's not a moneymaker for you right there. I just don't, uh, I don't understand necessarily the thought process behind doing it. If you're going Scotty, you sort of have to go all in on Scotty. But again, it might not be a bad idea. He's proven it before that he plays well, same course year after year. I, I I went all in last week. I now again I started getting in my feels on on Rory after you know the driver started looking good and the putter clearly you just felt a lot more confident. But you know I, I if you have money on any of the big three I I don't know if I could debate you. You know last year Ricky was obviously he was a headliner at this event. It feels a little bit different this year, and I, I think he was asked about it last week, and I, he had a pre- I think his response was basically like listen. You know, if I get in great, but ba- I feel pretty good about where we're headed, and he should. And when he beat Rom last week on Wednesday, you're like, God, he's going to make the quarterfinals. Like this, this thing has opened up. And then obviously Horschel got him, <laughs> derailed him. It's hard in, in this situation, but do you feel pretty bullish on, on Ricky just where he's headed? <laughs> you know, I mean, oh, yeah. jo- Jordan came out of the abyss. Jason Day's come out of the abyss. It feels like Ricky has really come strong out of the abyss. He is very, very close to playing some really, really good golf. I I do think it might happen on a week when there's maybe less pressure on him. This week at the Valero Texas Open, it's essentially all or nothing. I mean, he's making no bones about the fact that he's going to play these events to go win and get into Augusta. Hasn't played at Augusta 
since 2020, wants to get back in the field. There's that one invitation that's left out there, but man, it's hard enough to go win on the PGA Tour any week, let alone on a week when you absolutely have to have a win to get what you're looking for. I, I just don't think it's going to be that easy for Ricky this week, but I think it's going to be another fine week for him. And I do think that at some point down the road, at some point this summer, maybe when we're least expecting it, Ricky goes out and wins a golf tournament and uh, and climbs up that world ranking and doesn't have to worry about all this trying to get into majors moving forward that he can uh, move high enough in that ranking that he doesn't have to worry about those things. Who do you like this week? I'm looking at uh, a couple of Davises. I got Cam Davis at the top of my list. Uh, as you, you probably noted, John, that he was terrible at the beginning of the year. He missed five cuts in a row. He was a guy I was really bullish on coming off last season. He missed five cuts in a row. Revealed during the Players' Championship that he had had a, an illness and he felt lethargic on the golf course, wasn't able to practice the way he wanted to. And so um, so he's just not playing playing well at all. But finished in six of the players, 2-1-0 and record at the match play last week. He beat Aaron Wise and Tom Hoagie in those last two matches. I, I have reason to believe he's back. I did a podcast yesterday uh, with my buddy Ben Everill from Golf Bet, um, our Links and Locks podcast, and Benny said he sat down with Cam last week and he is 100% healthy and recovered and ready to go. If I can throw another Davis in there, Davis Riley is a young kid who won a Corn Ferry event on this very golf course a few years ago. And so um, he's been playing some good golf ever since they they left the West Coast, have to coincide with him getting a new caddy, James Edmondson, who used to be on Ryan Palmer's bag and everything's kind of uh, pushing together now for Davis Riley as well. So I, I think he's going to have a really good week. So I'm looking at those two guys. Uh, Davis has uh, Cameron Davis, excuse me, has uh, longer odds. And so he might be uh, worth a, a little more of a play there. Yeah, if somehow Davis Riley could win this week, you know, you look at he only played two majors last year, and he was pretty good. Made a cut in both of them. I think one, he had top 15. He's a guy, you know, I played at Alabama. I'm sure he's played Augusta before. I'd be interested, like, if he somehow pulls it off. T20, you probably get four or five to one odds on a guy like that. I mean, I, I'm bullish on Davis Riley winning an event sooner than later. So I I'm, I like that bet a lot on, on Davis Riley. Um any other top 10 bets, guys you like that are trending pretty well? Yeah. Uh, how about Thomas Dietrich? We talked about Cameron Young having 10 top threes around the world in the last year and a half. Thomas Dietrich is a guy who has nine top three finishes on the DP World Tour, where he's played most of his career. He's got another one here on the PGA Tour in his rookie season. He was eighth last week at the Corrales Punta Cana Championship. He's a really good player. He just can't quite get over that hump yet to win one, but I like him to come close Yet again this week, he's playing some really good golf, and uh, he's a guy that's going to be very, very good moving forward. Don't be surprised if he sort of sneaks his way onto the European Ryder Cup team later this year. You know what's crazy is the caddies, and we talked a little bit about it last year, the impact some of these veteran guys that came from established players that transition to the younger guys, you immediately see it with Cam Young and Webb's guy. You've seen it with Scotty now for you know a year and a half with Bubba's guy. I mean, the impact you just talked about, Davis Riley, these guys, younger players, get a guy with a lot of experience. You saw it for years with JT, and what's weird is when he transitioned to Bones from uh, with Jim Johnson, it it's kind of gone the other way. Like, JT feels like he's lost a lot of momentum. Someone texts me in the golf business, like, he's out of the top 10 for the first time since 2017. Now, we yeah. can talk about the OWGR, whatever, but he's just not playing as well as he had been in previous years. Like, I... Makes me a little nervous. I, I heard someone say that he this year has lost like 10 yards in driving distance. That used to be a point of differentiation for a little guy. And you just wonder, is it hard for a guy to maintain that when he's, it's not like he's 210 pounds. I mean, he's just a smaller player. Yeah. I don't know if it's necessarily that. I will say that every time I see JT these days, th there's like this cloud of consternation around him. There's like this, there's this anger, there's this mood that he, you know, he's frustrated and he wants to go play better golf. And even I, I sat down with him uh, on our radio show at the end of last year during the, uh, um, the PNC championship where he was playing with his dad. And I asked him to assess his year and he goes, man, it was a really bad year. And I didn't play my best and I should have played better. I could have played better. And I go, you know, you won a major championship this year, right? You won the PGA he goes, yeah, I know. And Tiger always tells me, 
when you win a major, you have to consider it a good year, no matter what else happens. And so I know I'm too hard on myself. I've got to be easier on myself and I win a major and I, I've got to like be happy with that and just be satisfied, but I'm not satisfied. I'm frustrated. I'm trying to play better golf. And so look, I, I can't delve too far into the psyche of Justin yeah. Thomas, but I, I do think there's something to the fact that he just can't quite get to the point where he's happy with himself, his game, his results. And I don't know. Look, I'm not going to play amateur armchair psychologist here, but it almost seems like a chicken or the egg kind of thing. Like, Hey, be a little happier with your play and your results. And maybe you'll play even better rather than trying to play frustrated and play angry. Yeah. That's yeah. I mean, it feels like Rom unlocked that a little bit, like a, a, a balance, you know, and, and yeah. look, I mean, he, he hasn't looked back since. Yeah, I'll get you out of here on this. I, obviously, last year, probably right around this time, Tuesday or Wednesday, the week before, it kind of came out Tiger was going to play, and that was the biggest story of the week. Obviously, yep. Tiger, I mean, we all expect him. You know, he hasn't officially announced, but he's going to play. Does feel like the story, that would be a little secondary to this just Phil, DJ, Cam, Bryson. I mean, what is it, 18 of those players? Yeah. Do, do you think you've been going to this event for a long time? Is this is this going to be one of the most unique kind of head storylines headed into a masters that you can remember? Yeah, probably. Um, it's going to be very interesting. I was starting to break down some numbers on uh, those 18 players. They they've combined in 36 combined starts. They've totaled for uh, five top 10 finishes on live in 48 man fields so far. So uh, none of them are playing great right now. Although we all know Cameron Smith is a fantastic world-class player. Dustin Johnson, has won the Masters in the past. He's played really well there. Uh, these guys can show up and play their best yeah. golf, even if they're not playing their best golf uh, on the live circuit on a, on a regular basis. I, I look at Patrick Reed, who gets fired up for the Masters every year. I look at Taylor Gooch and Abraham Anser, who are underrated players. I don't think they're going to win, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see their names on the leaderboard for at least a few days at, at Augusta. And so uh, they're viable players. I mean, it's 20% of the field. There are 90 guys in the field and 18 of them play for live. Yes. That's a lot. Some yeah, of them lot. on the leaderboard. We're going to see them infiltrating our TV screens. And we're going to be talking about them just because you can't ignore it. Uh, they're going to be out there. Is it going but, to be what well, Jay awkward? Sobel, do you, you expect, because remember last year, there was some not on the TV screens. It, you know, do you expect them to be all paired together? I mean, there, there's just a lot of unknown. I, I mean, no, I don't think they're going to be all paired together. I could be wrong about this, but I think Augusta national will treat them just like any other players, try to mix it up between all the guys. Look, I think everyone at this point has said their piece. And if Rory McIlroy happens to get paired with Bryson DeChambeau and Bubba Watson for two days, they're just going to go play golf. I, I don't think there's going to be any sort of awkwardness, any sort of weird conversations. Yeah. I've heard a lot about, the champions dinner could be very interesting with six of those players uh, Tuesday night going into the champions locker room and they have dinner there in the clubhouse. Uh, you know, I just, I still don't quite see it. I feel like we're past it uh, again. Everyone's spoken to everything they're going to speak about this situation. I don't know where you go from it moving forward other than, Hey, let's go play some golf. I'm, if nothing else, John, just from a, a fan's perspective, I think it's, incredibly intriguing you throw in guys who haven't really been playing that much golf first of all and haven't really been playing at the most competitive tour they could play on and all of a sudden <laughs> throw them in a major championship like this i am fascinated by what could happen totally agree well sobel i i will talk to you next week from the grounds of augusta national have a great week i think you're playing a little golf I enjoy it and uh talk to you soon man thanks buddy nothing better than I drive. I don't get to drive down Magnolia Lane, but I I can take like the the street just after it and just oh. pull in. But it's still pretty good. Yes, it could be worse. You know, <laughs> take it easy. Thanks, buddy.